What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is James. We're getting to the end of 2022. So I want to go over my most favorite pickups of 2022 and my least favorite pickups of 2022. You know, the ones that you regret that you wish you could save the money for. But let's get into it. We're going to go bottoms to tops. I'm going to leave chapters in the description below. So let's get to it. First ones first are going to be my Visvum slides. I absolutely love these slides. I've had them for about six or seven months now and they're just an overall amazing, just slip on, easy to wear. They're crazy comfortable. The quality on them is awesome. I love the Visvum sole and they've got a bit of a chunkier look. So they remind me of Vans kind of slip on, but obviously a much more elevated feel. And I think they're just a great add on. It's very inconspicuous. So not a lot of people know what they are. So which I personally like, they just got a really cool heritage with a little bit of streetwear with a little bit of like kind of scary. So I'm really digging these. Uh, I believe they're cork lined. So they've started to break in really well. I wore them on my trip to Scotland and I wore them almost the whole time walking around and they've just been such a great kind of staple. I think in 2023, I'm gonna get a similar pair, but maybe a black with some laces. But overall, I love these shoes. These are the Visvum Off-White-esque slides. Great shoe, amazing comfort. I love the pop of red. I just really enjoy the shoe itself. Next, we're gonna have, you probably haven't seen these in a while because it was near the beginning of my uh, YouTube career. So I did a review on them, but the video is horrible. But these have become a staple of mine too that I just love so much. These are my Bottega Veneta lug soles. These are the Chelsea's. These are the version one. I liked the version one because it was a bit more classic. So I liked the fact that it didn't have like a crazy amount of color to it. So I didn't have to worry about it looking like it was last season's, but I've really fallen in love with these. The high ankle on them has just been really kind of nice to have. I like the suppleness of the calf skin and they're kind of like just like a classic shoe with a very elevated look. If I'm wearing a crop, cause I'm a shorter person, this kind of elongates my leg. It's not something that I can kind of wear to work, but it does give like a really awesome look to it. And I just love the like the big chunkiness of the sole right here. I love the highness. I did kind of beat them up a little bit. So the toe is kind of starting to look a little wonky. I'm going to take some cream and see if I can get that out and get these kind of looking premium again. But they've turned into a staple that I'm going to have for many years. Even if they go out of style, I just really enjoy them. I think they're an amazing shoe and I'm, I'm happy to have them. So next we've got this one. I've showed this a million times. These are my church's Shannon T. I love these shoes. Again, it's, uh, you know, you'll notice that it's very few sneakers and a lot more kind of boots. These are the kind of things that I've started really getting into. Again, as my job requires me to wear a suit mostly every day, I like to have something kind of treads the line between fashion, function, and heritage. Um, so this is a really great kind of look, especially like the, the thickness of this lug sole. I really like the, the chunkiness of it and it's great for Chicago winter. I can wear them with like a pair of crop pants and then I know that I'm gonna have traction, but then I can just just wear them to work and I don't have to worry about that either. Awesome shoe that I've really grown to enjoy. I've worn the heck out of it. There's definitely a 2023 version that I want. So stay tuned for my 2023 grails. This has been a staple and been something that I just really like. I'm happy, happy to have it. Done shoes. So now that we're out of shoes, I'm gonna go into my pants. I don't have a lot of pants, um, but these are like ones that I just found that I absolutely love. I enjoy so much and I got them and I've been wearing the crap out of them. These are probably my number one and number two most worn pants. Let's get to it. These are my Levi's 501 Shrink to Vit. These are the 1954 edition. I have a whole series going on about me wearing them and washing them right here, so follow along for that. These are the pants that kind of got me back into denim. I was a big denim guy a couple years ago and I kind of just fell off. I think the, the denim was just, I got tired of crunchy denim and could never find the pair that fit me perfectly. And then I walked into a Levi's store and they actually had these on sale and I had to get them. I got them like almost like 60% off. They're a 12 ounce salvage unwashed denim. So you've got the salvage look right here. They're aging really, really well. I probably get about 50 or 60 wears on these. I love these jeans and these are ones kind of started me back into 
going into like raw denim or like men's heritage denim. Again, these are my 1954 Levi's 501. Next, I've done a video on this as well. This one is a bit different, but you'll, you'll know as soon as you see it. These are my capital. These are the Capital Century Denim. These are the number five, I believe. So essentially what the number five is, if you look really closely, what you're gonna see is that they're a brown denim. It's a 12 ounce raw denim with a blue shishiko fabric through them. I have been lusting over these for many years. I never really pulled the trigger just because I wasn't in the financial position to spend that kind of money on a pair of pants but I just absolutely fell in love with them. And then, you know, I got lucky this year and I'm doing a bit better. So I, I decided to pull the trigger. They've been amazing. They're, they're kind of a wider fit, like a 1940s like open leg, which is something that I've been really into. I'm not super into like really tight fitted skinny jeans. The 1954s, I'm excited to see how these wear. I need to wear them a lot more. That's another goal that I have is to beat the crap out of my denim for 2023. One of my most worn jeans, for 2022. I absolutely love these. I can't wait for the summer so I can kind of like really, really wear them. But these again are my Capital Century Denim number five. So those are the two pairs of jeans. I feel like once you've got a nice pair of jeans, your job is to wear them to death and get them really kind of beat up. Now we'll get into jackets. This one is my first one. This is the Sugar Cane. This is the 1950s sugarcane type two jacket. I got this one when I was in Scotland. I got this from a store called Dick's, I believe. I really wanted a jacket. I find it funny that I got an American heritage jacket that is made in Japan in Scotland, but it is what it is. This has a sentimental value to me. I'll never get rid of this. It just reminds me of a memory that I had with my fiance hanging out. There's a lot of memories to this and I'm excited to see how it ages and kind of wears in as well. Um, I also like, cause it's a 1950s vibe. It's got like that cropped kind of look to it, which is something that I really like. I'm not the tallest person in the world. I'm about 5'8", but I really like this. It is a, again, a 12 ounce denim. It's inspired by the 1950s Levi's Orslo is really putting a lot of effort into making things exactly as they would be if they were from that time. So I, I've really fallen in love with this. I wear it quite a bit. I don't like to be the guy to wear denim on denim, so I typically wear it with something else. But overall, this has been an amazing jacket and I love it so, so much. Orslo 1950s Type 2. I got one more jacket and then we'll go on to accessories. So this jacket is a bit new. I haven't had it for very long. You guys are gonna laugh. If you watch my essentials for the winter, you're gonna see that there's a bit of a discrepancy on this compared to what I said. I'll explain my reasons in a second. So this is a Arteryx Valence winter jacket. So this is the, I forget the name of it. I'll leave it right here. Over the course of a couple months, I've lost about 20 pounds. So I'm not quite as short and I'm not as quite as thick as I used to be. The issue that I had with that jacket is that it was a large. So I wore it and it was long in the arms already, but it really fit well in the chest and it was a little long in the body. I was okay with that because it fit in the chest and it was a winter jacket and it was kind of like a necessary evil to stay warm. Ended up, as you might know, I got like a gift card to Arteryx because of a jacket that I had that I had like a warranty exchange on. I ended up having a little bit extra cash and then I went over to the Arteryx store in Chicago we are lucky enough that we have an outlet store and then we have a regular store. So I went over to the outlet store because I had that extra $100 that I already knew that I had and I fell in love with this jacket. This is a 850 downfill, which is very similar to the jacket that I had previously. And then this one has a full Gore-Tex upper. So the shell over it is Gore-Tex, which is great because I would wear my other jacket and then I would throw my Beta AR over it. But it's just sometimes I had so many different layers and that one was so technical feeling. You just felt like overly technical. So this is the jacket that I ended up going with and it's a medium. So it's a short, shorter cropped feel and then it's a shorter in the arms and then the hood, it's got a hood. So that's a big thing too. And if you look inside of the hood, it is down filled. So it's a full down filled hood. It was natural that I would just go with this and I'm really happy with it. It's a great size, it fits great. I can wear something like this underneath it and it feels good. This jacket has been amazing. Out of jackets, now I'm gonna go into accessories. So this is my 
Bagu. So this is a all black nylon bag. If you look at it, it doesn't have a lot of stuff inside of it. It's got like this one pocket right here, which is great if you've got your keys. Somebody like me who will take public transportation to places and you know, will need a bag to like go shopping. Chicago has a pretty lofty bag tax. So it's like seven cents for every bag you use. That adds up a lot over time. Also, I don't want to add to like a bunch of waste. So this has been great. It will button into itself. So there's this pocket right here that just unbuttons just like this. And then you stuff it all in there too. So it's great for travel. But I use this as like a weekender. I use this as like a catch all tote. I use this for work if I'm gonna like sell something and I need to bring it down to the store so I can bring it to the USPS. And it gives me like a, the nylon, if you look closely, at very similar like Prada nylon. And it's like 40 bucks. I love this bag and I think it's a great kind of option to have when it comes to a cheap option that's got a huge amount of style. But I got two more accessories for you. I'm like an EDC person, so I like to have EDC stuff that is always with me and that I carry. And so I'm a bit of a nerd like that. We'll start off with my pen. This is my Karen Dosh. Just a very like traditional like clicky pen. This one's in brass. I have had pens before, so I'm good at keeping my pens. I've had this for like nine months to a year at this point, and it's been amazing. I've kept it for a while. I've had different cartridges. It's been great. I'm a pen guy because I just grew up. My grandfather always had a pen on him. Somebody that I knew that I would consider successful in my life always carried a pen. I know we don't need pens now with cell phones and stuff like that, but I love having a pen. I usually have a notebook with it as well. So this is my Karen Dosh kind of clicky pen. I'm sure there's a better name for it. Absolutely love it. Next, to add towards my EDC, this is something I got probably in like early January, so I've had it for quite a while. This is my Benchmade. This is the Jared Ozer Tonto. You'll notice that it doesn't have any clips which I like because I wear a suit most days. Five days a week I'm wearing a suit. So I wanted something that would fit in my pocket. If I had the clip, I had a Chris Reeves that I clipped in, but it actually ruined like three of my pairs of pants. I like Chris Reeves, I think their stuff is amazing. I'm not gonna take that away. I just, my use case wasn't useful for me. I liked a slim, thin knife, just overall a great knife. Again, this is my Jared Ozer Benchmade knife. So those are my favorite pickups from 2022. Oh, wait, 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 I got one more thing, I'm sorry. I'm back, all right, I'm sorry. This is another piece that I'm really happy that I bought this year. Um, it's a pair of shoes, so this is gonna be a little out of whack. I apologize for everybody that's kind of clicking through and was waiting for me to get to like things I don't like, but these are my Birkenstocks. So these are the Birkenstock Boston, a size 41. They're just the traditional Birkenstocks. I love these because if you look here, these were done by a gentleman named Kevin. His Instagram tag is like Kevin Concepts. But this is a like a, a shoe that I've been wearing. It's like my house slipper, if you will, or like run out and grab stuff for the dog or go grab some beer or something along those lines. I was never a Birkenstock guy, but then I got these and they just got a fun spin to something that's kind of a basic shoe. They're definitely something that I'm gonna have for years. Now I'm officially out of the things that I'm happy that I bought. Let's get into the things that I don't love. So these are things that, it's not that I don't love them and I don't like, appreciate them it's just I wish I had spent my money elsewhere or I found better alternatives for them or they just didn't fit the way that I expected first ones first are my Dior Birkenstocks I don't know if the last on these is different than the ones that I have I got the same exact size I just this part right here as I was wearing it I went I wore these to Scotland and they gave me like a really bad rubbing on my toe I have really high arches and so these rubbed like crazy and they actually gave me blisters the, the back strap is cool, but not for me. I'm not, I'm just not in love with them. I wish I had saved, I think these were like $1,100. I wish I had saved the $1,100 and put it towards like a really cool capital jacket or put it towards something that I was gonna use more. Just not in love with these. I don't necessarily regret buying them, but I love my other Birkenstocks that I have so much more and they've got so much more character. These are things that I, if I had the opportunity, I'd probably get rid of them. I think they're on Grail for sale right now. Oh, those are the shoes. I don't really have a huge amount of regrets for shoes because you can typically resell them but now we're going to get into pants so the two pairs of pants that i have one i already sold uh, those are my isamiyaki pleated pants i saw these on the internet so many times and i put them on and i went to the store and i know there's a million different cuts so the cut that i got was like a drop crotch with like a tight ankle 
not for me. I'm not a big drop crotch guy. I'm also not tall, so it's like to take that like already and have like a drop crotch, it made me look so short and then the ankles were weird. Also, because of the pleats that they are, they have to be like 100% polyester and I would feel like I was sweating in them. Every time I put them on, like it was just like my body started sweating. I'm not saying like I'm this pretentious guy who only has to wear cottons and stuff like that. It just, I don't know what it was. It just wasn't for me and I didn't really like the aesthetics of them. I ended up selling them on, on Grailed. I'm happy that I did. Maybe I'll try Isamiyaki pleats again in a different cut. I think I need to be a little bit more aware of what I'm buying. But overall, I, I'm not really happy with those. I got caught in the moment and I spent too much money on a pair of pants that I only wore like once before. Now I've got one other pant. These are my left field. So if for those of you who don't know, Left Field is a store out of Queens. They're like a men's heritage, mostly like workwear. I really like the pants itself. I love the white look of them. They're a Cones Mill made in USA pair. I love Cones Mill. I love the look of them. I like everything about them. My issue with them is the cut, really tight in the, in the thigh and then really loose in the waist. So like these are a size, 33 i could have probably been a 31 in them but the, the leg was so tight in them that it was hard for me to wear going into the store i had a great experience the people in there were really cool and i love the material of these it's just they're not the cut that i would want i think i got again got caught in the moment this is when i was in new york it's funny i have two of like the five things that i regret buying while i was in new york so maybe that's something to say but overall i really like these it's just they don't fit me well and i'm constantly pulling them up also because of their tightness of them i feel like a, i'm a sailor in them i'm I, I don't like the sailor vibe i ended up getting a pair of capital pair that you've seen they're like a shishiko white i'm really excited to wear it. i'm gonna keep these just because i like the provenance behind it and i like the dead stock cones mail that's been unwashed i'm not i kind of regret buying them boom next on the list is going to be these are my chrome hearts these are the deep three i got them and i really like them i really wanted like a cardiac but i ended up going with these because again i got caught in the moment 2023 don't get caught in the moment and the issue that i have with them is not the fact that they're not my aesthetic, it's the fact that they stretch and they're just like pinching on my temples. I'm gonna send these in to Chrome Hearts and have them actually resized and see how that, that works. But as of right now, they're driving me insane and I regret buying them. It's really a shame that these are not the vibe that I wanted. I like the edge, I like the, the cut of the lens. I like everything about them, I just, not in love with, with the, the fit of them, which is a really shame. So the last thing that I regret buying is going to be my engineered garment. I bought two pairs during the summer of the air crew pant. I really liked the aesthetic of them. I liked the feel. The issue is, is again, I'm short. So they were a drop crotch. They were short legged. I, I went with a small, they were high waisted. They just didn't fit my body type all that well. I love the pockets. I love the aesthetic of them. I ended up like really lusting after a pair of the Orslo fatigue pants. I think those are a bit more of a natural cut for me. That's the big thing about 2022 that I noticed. Buy things that fit my body and that feel better. So the air crew fatigue pants, something that I really, I really liked and I went and I, I was excited to buy them. It's just the more that I wore them, the more I felt like really short and kind of like frumpy in them. So I ended up getting rid of those as well. I took a pretty big loss on those. Again, getting caught in the moment and not really trying them on and getting an idea of feel. But the air crew pants are cool. They just didn't fit my body the way that I should. So I ended up selling them both. That's kind of how everything went. Those are my 2022 favorite pickups and my 2022 least favorite pickups. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry I went a little longer than I expected. But you folks have a great day. Enjoy the holiday and we'll see you soon. Be safe. Goodbye.